TV Blake here. Welcome to my 50 Licious channel. I made this film with two very dear sisters in Christ. This segment that you're about to watch talks a little bit about my journey with Alzheimer's, um, near and dear to my heart. So enjoy. And if you want more information about the film, you can see that in just a few moments. I can't even remember when it started exactly, when this problem got a name. I just know that my mother has had Alzheimer's so long, I have to strain my mind to remember when she didn't have it. Thank God for journals. Thank God I journaled from age five to 25. I sometimes just sit and read my old journals, scanning for the word mama. And when I see it, my heart smiles and I'm delighted even to read. I called home today to talk to mama, daddy answered, mama wasn't there. Then I remember how I would simply call home and talk to my mama, how nothing it seemed at the time, but how monumental even a conversation would be right now. We had always been so close too. Everyone knew I was her favorite. In fact, I was the only child she gave a pet name to, Poochie Woo. <laughs> Poochie Woo. My mother is alive. The blood is warm in her veins. She can't walk or dress herself or do anything for herself, but she is alive. She sometimes meets my glance when I position myself just right. But she rarely says a word. And there is no conversation, no good morning or how are you doing. But she's alive, existing, while somehow disconnected from me and everyone around her. So reading my old journals reminds me that we used to talk. Actually dialogue about my life, but no more. I used to cry when I would see mothers and daughters together, just doing mundane things, <laughs> doing great things, just being. So when I get sad about what Alzheimer's has claimed, I check it immediately. She is alive. I can still hug her. She is still here. Most people I know fear death of their loved one. That has not been my biggest fear. <laughs> Mine happened already. It was mama not knowing me. When Alzheimer's became a fixture in our life, I started to educate myself on the stages, read way too much on the internet. So I dreaded losing my poochie woo status. It terrified me. It haunted my dreams. I couldn't fathom looking into my mother's eyes and not seeing her see me, see me, see her poochie woo. Then one day, it just happened. She was living with me. We were on the couch watching TV and um, I got up to tend to some business in another room. When I came back, she was standing with her purse clutched under her arm. And she said, excuse me, miss, can you take me home? I, I stood there like a block of ice. And my mind is saying, but you're with your poochie woo. It's me. Mama, Mama, I'm your daughter, your favorite. But she looks so scared. So I think I managed to eke out. Sure, I'll take you home. So I, I ran to another room and I just started sobbing profusely, just lost it. 
And then a few moments later, she came to me, not recognizing me, but not remembering what had just happened a few moments before. I tried to stifle my crying, and she said, Poochie, everything all right? And I said, I'm okay, mama. But nothing was okay. It was as if someone had taken a machete and thrust it through my stomach and then pulled it out real quick and said, see, no blood. I knew I was wounded, but where was the evident? This knowing and not knowing me happened several more times over that year. Until one day, she just never snapped back to her poochie woo. The machete embedded in my soul, not fully in or fully out. Just a pain that never goes away. Never. I still secretly hope that one day I will look into her eyes and she will utter my name, release the deep cut wound for the last time. I used to pray that she would raise up and be healed, a miracle unexplained by man. I may not get to see it down here, but I know that one day when Mama and I both take off our earth suits and put on our heavenly bodies where no disease can inhabit, my soul will be machete free and I will be her poochie woo. Thank you.